broadly speaking, will be thinking about the city in th through three frames, right? Escaping from the city, escaping to the city, and escaping within the city. So if that makes sense, we'll go from there. Um, uh, I talked uh, a couple years ago with a woman named Margaret Crawford, who's an urban scholar who's a very interesting woman, and uh, someone who's written about something called Everyday Radiance, and it's a nice book that talks about the everyday, ordinary experience of the city, and, and especially the visual qualities of that. And she, she said something interesting to me, which she was talking about a shopping mall um, at the edge of Cambridge, Massachusetts, and she said, it's, it's, by the way, it's the most mundane of environments, right? It, it has a McDonald's, it has a Dunkin' Donuts, it has a Whole Foods, so it just become mundane. Um, and she said, Brandon, you know, every time you uh, get to this shopping mall, to you, it symbolizes suburbia. It means that you're arriving in the suburbs. But she said, remember that the, the people in the suburbs, when they get there, it means they're arriving in the city. So this, this place, which you think actually means nothing, actually has quite a lot of meaning. And uh, I thought about that since then, and I, and I realized that uh, when we look at the built environment, a lot of what we see in it is not, a, is not universal or uniform, but it has a lot to do with our own individual perceptions and understandings of the built environment. It's very relevant depending on who we are and uh, also where we're coming from. Right? So to me, this has a lot to do with the meaning of escape uh, in the city, as I said, particularly in New York. And uh, I was reading this book last year called Just Kids, Patti Smith's Memoirs. Mm -hmm. If anyone's read that, it's a fantastic book. Uh, punk rocker who moved to Chelsea in the 70s, actually to the Chelsea Hotel, in fact. Is that still functioning? Mm -hmm. Still functioning? It's immune to a punk rocker. Not functioning. <laughs> <laughs> the fate of many such places in New York. Well, Patty Smith came from basically working class New Jersey, and when she got to the Chelsea Hotel, she almost literally uses the word escape. She really felt like she had arrived and escaped from this environment that she had uh, really felt trapped in, right? The very constraining sense of 1970s New Jersey. Interestingly, at the same time, New York, as we now look on it historically, was so troubled that it was very easy for a film like Escape from New York to be made which was made almost at the same time. And people, um, at least when I was growing up, like people, that movie didn't seem so science fiction-ish, right? Like New York was pretty troubled at the time. It seemed almost realistic. So this relative sense of escape very much continues. Um, I was also thinking that today, lots of 20-somethings will escape from New Jersey into Brooklyn. And 10 years later, or 15 years later, as 30-somethings, they escape from Brooklyn into New Jersey. Right? <laughs> they escape, escape really runs back and forth. Uh, so in a sense, it's everywhere. And I think that's a good thing for us, especially in the, the uh, United States, um, that escape is available because escape really means freedom in a very fundamental way, even if it's, uh, even if it's temporary. So if we understand escape as a matter of perception, how do you escape within New York City? Uh, and this is where the Van Allen's uh, understanding of escape and its relationship to design gets kind of interesting. Um, escape uh, can be very much a matter of design because design can obviously intervene purposefully in the environment of the city. And with an awareness of escape, design can really promote escape or maybe prevent it, right? We're, we're used to seeing uh, buildings that we would say very kind of colloquially, wow, that building really looks like a prison, right? Or, Wow, I really like to live there. So I live there. I don't know. I'd have a view, like I'd be escaping from my everyday existence. So architecture can symbolize escape very much, as can urbanism. I think we'd all agree Central Park is very much an escape from the um, conventional Manhattan, uh, Manhattan environment. It is a uh, it's a wonderful gift because it permits an almost instantaneous escape, and was very much designed as such. So where else can escape be found? It can be found in many places, and this is in part the, the aim of this kind of cool exercise that we went through uh, in the afternoon. So we're looking for your observations, which hopefully we'll have some time to show, right? Everyone sent in photos. Um, we're looking for your observations to reflect maybe great examples of design where designers have really succeeded in permitting escape or conveying a sense of escape even if you don't experience it literally. Um, at the same time, you might be taking images of things that really provide directions for future design. Here's where designers and urbanists really need to do more work. And we have some responsible parties up here who uh, 
I can always direct complaints to Jeff. <laughs> I don't feel like there was enough public input on yes, the last no. redevelopment process. Too many shy people in Jeff, uh, <laughs> think of Jeff as a very intelligent and gentle punching guy. <laughs> um, anyway, in, through these kinds of reflections and through this really crowdsourcing type enterprise, I think we can all learn more about what makes a city good to live in and ideally what can make a city kind of more in tune with the notion of uh, escape, whether it's escape from or escape to.